So my name's David, and I grew up in an atheistic family. Our family were atheists, and uh, we never heard anyone say that abortion was wrong. I know that must sound surprising, but nobody ever said that. I was ambitious. And at 21 years old, I was cast in a Broadway show. And I was on my way to success. And uh, I'd been in films for Paramount and Columbia Pictures, and things were going really well for me. My girlfriend at the time was using an IUD, uh, contraception, but it failed and she became pregnant and, and I helped pay for the abortion. I read magazines in a clinic waiting room, hoping to escape the responsibility of being a father. She came out of the room and she was a, a changed person and soon after tumbled into an intense depression. And I drove harder into my career. The relationship ended. I fathered a second child with another woman. This time, um, the pill failed. Another abortion f followed. See, what I didn't understand was that the, at the moment of conception, I was not a potential father. I truly was a father from that moment. I should have taken responsibility, but I was at the top of my career and, and I selfishly was pursuing my addiction to attention. In the aftermath of abortion, I developed bulimia and I fell to 115 pounds. Take a lot of weight off of me and that's not very much. My voice was hoarse from the bulimia and that's kind of why I sound like I do now. And, and I ruined my voice. Um, and uh, the doctor instructed me not to talk for three weeks. But I was on a tour, the US Broadway tour of Cats, the musical. And I kept singing, and I injured my voice permanently, which is why I sound like I do now. I was 24 years old, and my singing career was over. You see, I sacrificed my children on the altar of my ambition, and I lost my career anyway. Addiction helped me run from the pain, but the misery ultimately drove me to my knees. And in 1988, I gave my life to Jesus. Eventually, I became a Catholic. I entered a long period of celibacy and purification. I thought that was my path in life. My recovery from the abortions began when I took responsibility for the gravity of what I had done. I received counseling. I went on many retreats, including Rachel's Vineyard. You know, 40 miles into the woods, it's 40 miles out. And it took me a while to recover. I found healing and confession and sharing my testimony. One morning during prayer, I, I saw a little girl walking across the street. It was kind of like a dream. And I was driving and I, I tried to stop, but the brake failed. Her little face smashed against the windshield and a voice said to me in my head, David, this is your daughter. Then I saw Mother Mary holding this girl's hand in my prayer and, and I asked Mary can I talk to her she said yes you can David and I asked well how will I know she's in heaven Mary said she's with me isn't she that day I was reconciled to my daughter Tina recently recently during prayer I saw my son Benson the second abortion. He was playing the piano for a choir of angels in heaven. In that moment, we were reconciled. Six years ago, I met and I fell in love with a woman named Kirsten. We practiced chastity until we were married three years ago. Five years ago. Five years ago. <laughs> she just reminded me. <laughs> It's an old document I'm reading. <laughs> you know, we love marriage, we love life, and we love the unborn. This year, we were given a tremendous gift. After five years of marriage, we had a completely natural pregnancy with no medical intervention. At this late stage in our lives, the OB said he had never seen it before in 35 years. God has given us a beautiful 
and healthy daughter. Her name's Odessa Marie, and she's sleeping right now. God has given me a second chance at life with my 12-week-old daughter. We are silent no more. <laughs>